Recently, I built a powerful PC for audio and video editing, and I made sure that it included Thunderbolt ports for my Universal Audio Apollo X8 interface. I was super excited to get everything up and running, the interface worked flawlessly with my DAW, but when I tried to jump on a Zoom call with someone, my voice sounded really distorted and crackly, and it was completely unusable audio. I thought that was kind of weird, so I tested out my audio on Discord and I had the same issue. After struggling with this for a while, I reached out to Universal Audio support and they told me this. The Apollo is strictly designed to be used professionally and the limitations of WDM drivers, which are what programs like Zoom and Discord use, compromises functionality with real-time audio devices via Thunderbolt. Full support will likely not be in the immediate future. ASIO support is needed in your applications for full compatibility. I read this and just thought like, what? How can my Apollo, which is supposed to be a top of the line audio interface, capable of intense audio processing tasks, be incompatible with these popular applications on Windows 10. Luckily, James, the guy who I was in contact with from Universal Audio Support, pointed me in the direction of a potential solution. He warned me in advance that this is not something that Universal Audio has tested or supports, but after walking through the steps myself, I managed to get Discord and Zoom working on Windows 10 with my Thunderbolt interface. So I'm gonna show you how to do this too. Before diving into this, I do wanna warn you that getting this set up for the first time is a bit of a nuisance, but you only need to set everything up once. First, make sure your Universal Audio interface is selected as the default playback device on Windows 10. Click the Start menu, search for Control Panel, and then click on Sound. Locate the Universal Audio Thunderbolt WDM option, click Set Default, and then choose Apply. Now you need to download an application called Jack Audio Connection Kit. I've included a link to it down below. If you're on a 32-bit Windows system, choose the 32-bit installer, and if you're on a 64-bit Windows system, choose the 64-bit installer. Run the installer and then click on the Start button. You're gonna look for an app called QJack CTL. Open the app and then click on Setup. From the interface drop-down menu, select Universal Audio Thunderbolt and then click Apply. You'll see how this app is being used in a minute, but for now, don't worry about it. Just follow along with these steps. Next up, you need to download a program called Voice Meter Banana, which is an audio mixer application. Again, I've included a link to this below. Download the zip package and then run the setup. It's extremely important that you restart your computer after the installation process so that the drivers get installed correctly. Once you've restarted your computer, open up QJack CTL and click Start. When you do this, it's going to make your Apollo's ASIO inputs available within VoiceMeter. Minimize QJack CTL and open VoiceMeter Banana. Click on this A1 drop-down menu and choose ASIO Jack Router. As you'll see, your ASIO inputs become available, but since you're likely recording in mono, you don't need outputs one and two assigned to hardware input one. Open the menu up top here and then navigate to the patch ASIO inputs to strip section. For in one, select one one, and if you're recording with a second or third mic, you can assign in two to two two, and in three to three three. If you're recording into a different input on your audio interface, just assign it to the hardware input track you want to use in VoiceMeter. Next, deactivate all of these A1 buttons, along with A1, A2, A3, B1, and B2 next to the cassette. You can also deactivate B1 on both virtual inputs. The only thing you need to do is make sure that B1 is activated on the hardware input tracks you want to use. This is going to route the audio to this virtual bus 1 over here, allowing you to select the bus as an input in both Discord and Zoom. With all of your settings good to go, click on the menu and then Save Settings. You can rename this preset and save it wherever you want. Then click Load Settings on Startup and choose the preset you just made. When you open VoiceMeter, these custom settings will load by default. First, I'll walk you through how to set up your audio in Discord for best results, and then Zoom. Open up Discord, click on the gear icon to access Discord settings, and then navigate to the Voice and Video tab. You're going to choose VB Audio VoiceMeter VAIO as your input. Be careful here because there's also an AUX VAIO option, but we didn't set up VoiceMeter to make use of this option, so that one's not going to work. Then for your output device, you can simply choose your universal audio interface from the drop-down menu. By default, Discord's voice processing settings might make your audio cut in and out, so you'll probably need to deactivate echo cancellation, noise reduction, and automatic gain control. You can play around with these settings, but I found that my audio sounds better without them applied. One of the benefits of using a universal audio interface is that you can process your audio on the way into your computer using UAD plugins, so you can manipulate the sound however you want before it reaches Discord. 
The same settings apply to Zoom, but I'll show you how to set this up as well. Open up Zoom, click on the gear icon, and navigate to the audio tab. Select your universal audio interface as the speaker and voice meter output VB audio voice meter VAIO as the input. Again, make sure you don't choose the AUX VAIO option. I haven't found Zoom to be as aggressive with the audio processing as Discord, so everything should sound pretty good by default, but you can tweak these other audio preferences to see what works best for you. One thing to note is that if you start up QJack CTL after you open voice meter, voice meter isn't going to recognize it. You'll get some flashing error text to indicate that Jack router isn't available. If this happens to you, just close both programs, open QJack CTL and click start, and then open voice meter. You can also route the audio output of your DAW into voice meter so that people on Discord and Zoom can hear your session audio. To do this, just activate A1 and B1 on the voice meter VAIO virtual input channel, and then assign this virtual input as the output audio device in your DAW. When using your universal audio interface with these programs, the latency seems to be pretty comparable to using a USB headset. It's not real-time audio, but that's not what we're going for here. The whole point is just to be able to use apps like Discord and Zoom with your universal audio Thunderbolt interface without going out and buying a USB mic. If you wanna learn how to produce better music fast, start now by subscribing and clicking the bell so that you don't miss out on tips, tutorials, and gear roundups. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. Dr.